Hi everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Felicia Garcia. I'm the Curator of Education at the Indian Arts Research Center. Tonight we are here to virtually celebrate 2020 Ronald and Susan Dubin Native Artist Fellow, Michaela Patton. Michaela is a Glala Lakota and a recent graduate of the Institute of American Indian Arts. She works in several different mediums, but primarily focuses on papermaking and printmaking. In her practice, she utilizes Lakota line designs and symbols to continue traditional art forms, such as quill work and beadwork, but uses new materials and techniques. As Michaela has stated, just as modern natives are forced to adapt to a forever changing environment. Through her work, she also addresses themes of cultural healing, native wellness, and feminine strength. When Michaela applied for this fellowship at SAR, her goal was to explore bookmaking techniques and create a small installation of handmade paper sculptures. Since arriving on campus, Michaela has had to adapt to many changes due to the pandemic and our campus closure. But I visited her studio recently from a safe distance and I'm so amazed by both the amount and the diversity of work that she has created during this short time. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what she has to share with us tonight. We will be sorry to see Michaela go, but since she is based here in New Mexico, there will be plenty of chances to see Michaela and her work locally. We also look forward to having her back on campus when we are once again open to the public. Currently, Michaela has an exhibition of her work on display at Echo Amano Gallery on Canyon Road, so you can visit the gallery to see her work in person or visit their website. We also have another interview that I did with Michaela as part of our SAR Artist Live series, which was live streamed on Instagram, but you can find the videos on our YouTube page. So please visit our website for more information about that series. And just a quick message for our viewers, if you have any questions, please type them in the questions box on the right side of your screen, and I will make sure to relay those questions to Michaela at the end of her talk. Also, before we begin, I would like to take a moment to thank Ron and Susie Dubin for their generosity in supporting this fellowship. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Michaela Patton. I would like to thank Felicia Garcia, Ronald and Susan Dubin for this opportunity to work in the Dubin studio and here on SAR campus. My projects and goals here at the SAR uh, was to focus on um, learning bookbinding and working on a small installation uh, while utilizing my printmaking and papermaking skills. So these are the books that I made here um, in the studio. Uh, I made um, I made handmade paper covers and the prints that are in the inside are old prints that I had and I just tore them down to make the pages or what they would be called as signatures. Um, this one here is they are actually single sheets. Um, this one they are done in a what is called a single sheet style, but I still put two sheets together um, back to back just so it has a little bit more um, durability. And the stitch that it, stitching style that I use is called um, Coptic stitch. Um, again, using my handmade paper for the cover. And then this one here is more of a folded um, signature. So it's using longer sheets of paper and then folding them and turning those into the pages. And again, I did use the, the style of the Coptic stitch here as well. And the covers um, on this book has embossed, um, I embossed into the paper. Uh, this one here is one, again, I used old um, prints, but I actually added on the back of those old prints, I added um, a prints to them, new prints, and that print mimics all throughout each each of the pages, and um, and also the image is even cut out on the um, front and back cover, mimicking that image all throughout the entire book, even when it's open.
the tools that I used for to make my my books are basically a nylon uh, sewing thread, uh, all-purpose thread, um, and I just stuck with black because I wanted to keep it simple, and I was just kind of ex experimenting with these. And then I used a a bone to um, for folding the pages, and then I have my my awl. These are the, uh, the small installation pieces that I um, started. Um, these are done on my handmade paper that I did make here. Um, and this is all glass beads here on the front. And then I just used um, just a beading thread and you could actually see the mimicking thread design on the back, which is kind of nice. And just the contrast of the, the handmade paper, the um, the texture and the glass beads um, really make this piece pop and hopefully the rest of my pieces. Um, here's another piece I started. Um, you can see my, my drawing here where I'm going to continue beading. And then another one. This one still actually has the thread on it. And then I have more pieces here that have my um, designs that I'll be continuing um, with beads. With this project, project I was referencing um, the women's um, beaded yoke, and what it is is it's the top upper part of the um, the traditional dress um, when it's beaded. Or well, I'm referencing more of the beaded ones. Usually they'd be done in um, all beadwork or sometimes painted on or sometimes um, uh, just put bells or other types of materials. But the ones that I was looking at specifically were the beaded ones and the yoke. And I was really inspired by the, the pattern of the yoke, which is here. And uh, this design just kind of um, it mimics kind of like the the woman's um, bust, and then even uh, the symbol here in the middle is a uh, reference to a turtle, which um, symbolizes health, so like the health for women, and that's kind of what my my inspiration for the installation will be. And my, my idea is to, when they're finished, to have them um, suspended from the ceiling in this um, format. Um, so, um, on the side of my projects here at uh, SAR, I wanted to be able to give back to the community and by that I um, went, a, went ahead and made quite a few prints and my plan for these prints is to um, sell them and use 100% of the proceeds to go back to my community that I'm from and also um, the community here in uh, New Mexico, the native community. Um, so I went and I wasn't able to go physically go through the um, collections, but I was able to look at a lot of images and um, I was really inspired by a lot of the black and white pottery. And so I went ahead and made some images that are directly um, designs that were directly from the pottery. Um, and I will provide images of those pieces. Um, but this was a design that I really fell in love with 
was just a really beautiful design and it was actually on the neck of the pot that and it went all the way around sideways but i liked it um this design and then th this is another design i really fell in love with um really simple but it's just it's so beautiful and um the cool thing about these designs too is they're really similar to a lot of my um my the designs in my culture um so th these both the designs that i chose um to recreate i guess or reprint was um their water designs that were on uh water um, jars and from the these prints i went ahead and did my own designs kind of taking that same idea just kind of like looking at the simple um, developing of the print. So like with this one, it has like this curve and this one has its curves. And this is actually like a similar design to um, beadwork. And um, I just thought they just kind of influenced each other design wise. So I went ahead and made um, th those. And I, I did some on my handmade paper and some on regular paper. Um, and then from all those prints, I also made another design that was my own, um, taking inspiration from similar um, patterns like this one. It kind of has like the same pattern, but it's more stretched out. And then on top, instead of putting this triangle, the upside down triangle, I went and used a design that is actually a cloud design in my culture, which is kind of like this pointy design here. And then again, with the pottery designs, they had, there was a lot of like plant designs within the pottery. And so this one's kind of like a plant design too, from taking from beadwork um, inspired pieces too. And again, I did do these, some on handmade paper and some on regular paper. And then with these pieces here, um, I focused more on strictly just designs, um, but just basic designs from my culture, um, which is kind of like this reflecting design, which is really important because it's a, um, in my culture, we always say like everything is a mirror. Like we, we mirror, you know, we live on this earth and we mirror the stars because that's where we come from and that's where our ancestors are. And then they also mirror us too. So that's this piece. And this one is called um, Our Home because like half of it, it looks like a teepee. So it's just kind of like cool playing around with these designs. And then I chose to use, um, I chose to do the other ones in black and white because they are taking from black and white pottery. And then these ones are in color because usually the designs that are found in my tribe are done in beadwork or cool work or paint and they're very vibrant in color. And then this is another design I did sticking with like the same idea of like the mirror design and this one is called reflection and then i i did do on um, these ones i did addition of 15 on both so there these are limited edition prints all of them are um some have 21 some have 17 and also 15 and the first the first four or five prints will be uh, available on my handmade paper and the rest will be regular paper. Uh, with the prints that I showed you, I um, wanted to kind of explain how I did the pieces because they were kind of fun. Um, I used a process called Colleograph and what it is is basically taking uh, found materials and gluing it to a plate and then uh, inking and uh, running the um, plate with paper through the press. So with these, I essentially used um, just like a really thick paper and got a, a, I made my designs on, drew, drew the designs onto the paper. And then I also, I um, with the X-Acto knife, cut out the design. And then I just glued it with using, I did a couple of different ones. I used a matte gel and then a adhesive and then um, just glued it directly to these uh, acrylic plates that I've had laying around forever. And um, yeah, it was kind of fun. And then with some of these designs, I even, um, I recycled basically macaroni and cheese boxes and cracker boxes and cereal boxes. And that's how I made them. 
would like to thank the donors, uh, SAR, and everybody here that I, I was able to meet, and um, I hope to stay um, in contact with everybody. I really enjoyed this experience here at SAR. Um, I spent a lot of the time alone, but it was kind of nice because I really got to uh, experience the the land here, the the trees and the sky, and uh, just, again, I just like to thank everybody so much. And in my language, we don't ever say goodbye. We always say, uh, "See you again," and it is uh, "Doksha Ake." Hello. Can you hear me? Um, I can't hear you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, my mute button wasn't um turning off for some reason, but I said thank you. That was really interesting and I loved um, learning about the process for making those prints at the end. That was, I've never heard of a process like that before, so that was really awesome for me. Um, just a reminder to our audience, feel free to ask Michaela any questions. Um, there's a little question box on the right side of your screen where um, you can type them out and then I will make sure they um, get to Michaela. Um, but I also have a couple questions of my own. Um, just thinking about those prints at the end, um, I'm wondering where do you um, have your work for sale that's available? Um, do you have a website or um, what's the best way to find it? Uh, yes, I actually, I have a few kind of older pieces on my website, which is just MichaelaPatton.com. I have a shop on my website. <clears throat> I have some older pieces on there. And then I do have some pieces at the Head Show Amano, um, my show that opened last week. But most of those pieces actually aren't available. Um, but there are a few prints there. And then I do have a show opening uh, tomorrow at the, um, at the Kuroskiro Gallery. Okay, that's great. And those um, those prints that you were showing us, when will those be available? Um, I'm hoping for them to be a bit available by this weekend. Um, I'm just kind of a hard, having a hard time putting them online. Um, but yeah, they should be available and um, I'm not going to do them through my website because I, I want, you know, the full amount of them to go to as donation rather oh. than the you know, percentage being taken out of them. So I'm still working on that, but I will have a link available um, on through my social media. Okay, great. thank you. Um, one question I had, just seeing the diverse amount of projects that you're working on, do you work on all of these different projects simultaneously or do you start one and finish it before you move on to something else? Um, I, I work on them usually on and off all together at once. Um, it's usually because I get, sometimes when I overwork myself on a project, I'll get like, I'll start overworking it or I'll start overthinking it. And then I end up like um, messing them up sometimes. So that's why I kind of like to have multiple projects going because then I can um, take a break from that one and then go over here and just kind of like stop thinking about that one and then think about a whole nother one. And it, right. it, it me. <laughs> um, so where, I mean, I saw those pictures of the collection and your prints. That was amazing. I love those pieces. But where else are you drawing inspiration from these days? Um, well, I did do a project. The, the pieces that I have at the Hecho Amano, um, those pieces were kind of inspired by like nature like I was being um, whenever COVID first started I, I was kind of like stuck in my apartment like all the time and I kind of went a little bit crazy and um, I was like missing like 
you know, the, the sun, I was missing being outside, going on walks. And I was like, kind of depriving myself from those. So I was like, you know, I, I need to do some artwork to kind of get me out of that funk. So I started doing my beaded pieces and um, that kind of influenced it a lot. And then also um, I do beadwork anyway, and I was looking at a lot of beaded dresses and those, those were kind of influencing my work as well. Yeah, I love those beaded pieces. Like I love beaded jewelry. I have tons of beaded earrings, but it's like sometimes you just want to put it up on the wall and those are yeah. just incredible to look at. Um, I wanted to ask, I mean, you do, you work in so many different mediums. Are there any other mediums or techniques that you're interested in experimenting with in the future? Um, well, the one was the bookmaking, which I really, really liked. Um, it was kind of hard to get the hang of it at first because it's really the stitching, like I kept messing it up. And so, and when it's finished, you can totally tell because the stitch repeats over and over and I was messing it up going like different ways. So anyway, that's something that I would like to continue to like play around with. Um, other than that, I really just want to push more of like the beaded pieces um, mm -hmm. with made paper because I really, really like doing that. Yeah, I think those are so interesting. And I love how you have like the different sizes and shapes. The circular paper is super interesting. Um, where did you get the inspiration to um, create an installation with those pieces? I think that's a really great idea. And I'm just curious about where that idea how you came up with it it's amazing well i actually did a a, a similar um idea to, to that it was actually my um my senior thesis for my undergrad i did a, a installation of paper of the handmade paper but they were those pieces were laser etched onto and they mm -hmm. were ended from the ceiling and i really liked that project it was really like for me it was like super personal but it was like really strong and it was so so intimate and I kind of wanted to do that again with the um, with the paper and the beads and the kind of the circular the more circular forms kind of came about like um, just the idea of like um, like the moon like it, it has like a the moon is such a, um, a like has feminine energy and I kind of thought that that played well with this idea because I was mm -hmm. taking did um, the beaded designs were kind of influenced by the beaded um, dresses and then you know just like that whole idea of like having all this like feminine energy I just wanted that all to play together and that's kind of where it all came from. That's beautiful I love that. Um, let me see I think I just have one more question there's still time for the audience if you want to type anything in your question box. Um, but I would love to know um, what's next for you. Do you have any exhibitions or other residencies coming up in the future? I actually, um, I'm going to be a part of a couple group um, projects. Mm -hmm. One is um, they're projects that are based back home. So they're all um, specifically uh, Lakota artists. So one is I'll be working with a group, um, a couple of different artists from home, and we'll be working on a um, uh, sculpture um, project together and we're it's still kind of being developed right now um, especially with everything going on but there's four of us working and we're all Lakota artists from my community working on a sculpture together and we're hoping for that to be done by October hopefully the end of the year um, mm -hmm. and then the other project that I'm going to be working on is another group show and it's the Lakota creation well the the uh, Lakota, Dakota, Nakota uh, creation story, and um, there are different um, um, beings that helped create our Lakota uh, creation story. And each of there's seven of us, and we each get a different being that we're gonna like capture in a piece of work. And that's something that I'll be working on too. That's great. Thank you. I'll look out for those. Oh, let's see. It looks like we got some audience questions that I um, think I missed. So um, one question asks, how did you get started? What medium did you start with? 
Um, well, I guess I don't know how far back I, I want to go. Uh, I guess uh, I originally started with um, photography and drawing, and then I, when I went and started my undergrad, I got into painting, and I kind of like throughout my undergrad, I thought I was going to continue with painting, and then I started um, actually did a mentorship um, with a printmaker, and um, and then I started taking printmaking classes, and then I just I didn't find painting to be as much fun as printmaking. Mm -hmm. So I really took on printmaking heavily. And then um, eventually, it's been about two years since I started um, doing paper making. And mm -hmm. I, the two kind of like play well together. So I think um, those are kind of the, the main two that I guess will continue pushing me. <laughs> right. Um, let's we have a couple more questions. Sorry to the audience, I missed these. Um, someone asks, how has COVID impacted your career as an artist or how have you had to adapt? Well, when COVID first started, um, it was really dramatic. I mean, I, I'm as a printmaker and a paper maker, I need space, like a lot of space to work. I need a press. Um, I mean, I don't always need a press, but usually I'm used to working with the press. So um, it was really bad at first. Like I was struggling to find money to pay for my bills and everything. And um, I kind of got a little depressed because like like I said, when, it, uh, when we were stuck inside, that's kind of like how the beaded and paper pieces came about because I had my had paper already made and I had it with me. And, I, and so I just cut it down to smaller pieces and I just started beading on it. And mm -hmm. Like I said, at first it was really hard, but um, I started getting like opportunities like this came about and this this kind of like really helped me, the residency here. And um, that's kind of why I wanted to give back to, to the community because I know how hard it was at first. Right. Yeah, I can't even imagine trying to um, continue your practice in a small space because I've seen your setup with all of your paper making supplies and it just seems um like it requires a lot of space so um i'm yeah. glad you got that well um, i mean you can like the space in the back i need a lot of table space too right. so have a little tiny apartment with like one table is really hard <laughs> right um another question uh, kind of related to that someone asks uh what materials do you make your paper out of so um, being as being a printmaker, I work with paper all the time, regardless of my handmade paper, and I go through so much of it. So um, like I'll I'll do like bad prints, and usually before it would it would end up going in the trash, and you know I was kind of wasting that paper a lot, and I kind of was thinking, well, obviously paper making, I could just recycle all that bad paper or um, bad prints, and so that's kind of where my paper materials come from. And then I also, um, I use fabric in, in all, I, was, I also put fabric scraps into my paper and um, sometimes natural like plant material too. Yeah, I love that print of yours that I saw that had um, like almost a full sage leaf in it. I thought that was like a beautiful touch to add to the print. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's, it's, it's real beautiful. It comes out really nice. Um, let's see. Um, again, a question about the um, beaded paper pieces. Someone would like to know what stitch you use on the handmade paper. So I do a um, lane stitch or, or a lazy stitch. Um, it depends on where you're from. People call it um, either one, uh, uh -huh. but that's the style that I work in. And with the Usually um, it's done on leather. So when you would stitch it into the leather, it, you actually don't go all the way through. You just poke the surface of it and mm -hmm. go. All the way through. But with my paper, you know, it's, it's um, I have to go all the way through and then turn and come back up all the way through. But it's, it's, it's essentially the same style as lean and lazy stitch. Right. I know I've tried beading and I have no skill in that area and I've tried the lazy stitch and there is nothing lazy about it. <laughs> it was hard. So. Yeah, that's why like people actually don't like 
to call it that, but I mean, yeah, it's totally the opposite of what it, that name is. Right, exactly. <laughs> it, it's practice and, it, and it's something that I'm continuing to still learn as I'm going. And I'm really slow at it. I'm not like quick at all. It, that's why I wish I had pieces done, but it takes a lot of time to bead. <laughs> Oh yeah, and it's like all of your work is so precise and um, you have a lot of pieces that are symmetrical and so I, yeah, I can imagine that just takes so much time. Yeah. Um, let's see, okay. Another question uh, kind of related to those pieces. Someone asks, can you talk about health for women and how it influences your work? Well, um, kind of towards the end of my undergrad, I was really looking at a lot of like uh, mental health and um, like physical health, just all of, all of that stuff like that. And it was something that was really influencing my work and something influencing just my personal life. And um, I really encourage it. And so I try to like put it into my work and kind of like talk about it and just so like with my work, I like to put a lot of things that are like empowering and like powerful and encouraging to like just uplift women, you know, or just any needed really. But um, yeah, that's kind of like how that influences my work. And I hope to yeah. influence people too when they look at it and think about it. Yeah, I think that's really beautiful when you were talking about the beaded pieces and how um, you were kind of having a hard time when you started making those and, you know, they're about women's health um, and those kind of had like a really positive impact on you personally. So I think that's just really beautiful. Um, let's see, we have a couple more questions here. Someone would like to know, where is your home? So I was um, born and raised on the Pine Ridge Reservation of South Dakota, uh, which is near the Black Hills. It's near Rapid City, if you're unsure where that reservation is. But yeah, I'm from, I'm from South Dakota, kind of the Southwest part of the state. Right. Um, but you're currently based in Santa Fe, right? Yes, but I live here in Santa Fe. Awesome. Um, let's see. Alicia, our director, um, would like to know, what about printmaking gives you joy as compared to painting or other media? Well, printmaking, I feel like it has, it has like this, like, there's so many steps to certain like processes that, that for me is like, like I enjoy, like, you know, like I like to learn new things all the time. And I feel like with printmaking, I'm constantly learning new stuff even just like within the traditional printmaking realm but like um even like alternative printmaking I'm continue I can continue to like um use like found objects or whatever to use to print make and that's what I really like about it and it's just I just really enjoy printmaking and there's still like so much printmaking processes that I haven't even tried yet so I'm still learning and that's what I really like about it. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm going on a similar note. Um, Nanaba asks, um, well, she comments, I love that you make your own paper. Who else do you admire as a paper maker? Are there many art native artists who are making paper too? Um, she adds um, she, as a jeweler asking. I don't. Um, I wouldn't say that there's any, like, not that I really know of, but I know, like, as jewelers, um, uh, Meek, I think her name's Meek Watchman, she makes her own paper jewelry, and I, I was actually really inspired by that, her work, too, um, but she does a lot of, like, watercolor on her pieces, but, she, um, yeah, I really like her work, and, I don't know. I don't know. I can't say any like native artists that make paper. Yeah, I don't have any that come to mind either. But let's see. Oh, um, we have a request for, um, can you repeat that artist's name? Oh, um, uh, Meek Watchman. She, okay. 
she, I, I think, well, she makes her jewelry out of paper. I'm not sure if she makes it herself, but I know that she does make her jewelry out of uh, paper. And I, and I really love that. And I, it's kind of something that I thought about before. So, yeah, tuned. that's interesting. Um, let's see. I think we just have one more question here. Um, Ron Dubin said it was a great presentation and um, he would like to know if your experience at SAR has met your expectations. Um, I guess I wasn't really expecting anything like specific, but I really enjoyed it here. It was very quiet. Um, I got to enjoy the crazy weather. Um, yeah, and, it, and I love being around trees like being in an apartment, I don't get that opportunity. And I'm being here, I'm like surrounded by trees. So it's kind of nice. And I, I really enjoyed it here a lot. That's great. Um, let's see, I think that's it as far as questions. Oh my gosh, people had so many great questions. Um, so yeah, thank you to the audience for joining in and for all of your wonderful questions. And thank you so much, Michaela, for um, joining me and for that really interesting uh, presentation that you gave. Thank you, Felicia. All right, well, I think that's it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.